really had no interest in making. I'm just kind of over the whole Mazda Android Auto thing. So this will be the last one that I do about this. And I know it's been like a year and a half since I made one the last time. I, actually, I think it was, might've been three years, 2017. I started shooting this video in 2020. It's now halfway through 2021. I meant to edit this video. I meant to put it out, but I didn't. So here I am, 2021, finally making this video. And that's that. So any reference to 2020 you get in this, well, it's now 2021. All right, back to the video. But like I said, this is gonna be the last one that I do. So what can we talk about with Mazda Android Auto in 2020? Well, a few things have changed. For one, Mazda is now offering Android Auto in their cars, but it's not for free. At least not for older cars with the older Mazda CMU and earlier firmware versions and everything else. We've kind of already shown that it's possible to get Android Auto fully functioning in your car for free without any additional add-ons. And there's a lot of people that are kind of pissed off or upset that Mazda is offering Android Auto, but at the cost of like four to five hundred dollars plus labor. And to me, that kind of bothers me. It bothers me because, well, I already have Android Auto in my car. It didn't cost me a dime. And now they're telling me to get official support. I got to pay this money. And with that said, it's not necessarily unwarranted. The ability to use certain phones may be added by the addition of this hardware. But I still can't find a way to justify that cost when we have a method of getting it functioning without it. With that said, to clear up a couple questions, for the most part, you can install Android Auto in your Mazda. This is assuming it is between around a 2016 to brand new. The caveat to that is that you gotta have the firmware of your CMU at a right level. On the earlier firmwares of 57 to 59, give or take, it's easy enough just with the software hack of the all-in-one tweak tool and installing the USB drive. If you're 59 and above, I think up to 70, it's gonna potentially take a software and a hardware modification. So if you just expect it to be able to plug in the USB drive into your car and it to work, that's not gonna be the case. Otherwise, your next option is gonna be the official way of doing it. And I'm gonna link a video down below of a good channel and a guy that I've talked to about exactly this, of buying the hardware and installing it and running whatever other modifications you need for the software to get it all up and running with the official firmware and official hardware of the Mazda Android Auto platform. And with that, you could potentially get the benefit of Apple CarPlay. So for all those people asking about Apple CarPlay, that's the way you could possibly do it. Otherwise, I'm done with Mazda and Android Auto. I haven't really even been using it in my car, partly because I don't drive my car that often, and because I just kind of got away from it. It works still to this day, it does what it's supposed to do, but there's been a little issues all along that we've run into that we've gotten through, we've fixed, and some that have popped back up in time. For me, I'm kind of at a point now where if I want Android Auto, I'm kind of just gonna go out and spend the money to buy the hardware and install it myself. I kind of just want an experience that works right out the box. I don't want to hack around anymore. So to each their own, I did it for a while. I'm over it now, but if you still want to do it, it's still out there. You can still do it. I'll provide all the links below to my old videos, to my blog where I outline the process of doing it. And if that's what you want to do, go for it. Otherwise, later, that's it. I'm done. I'm out. No more Android Auto.